Nine months ago, Electrify America started a program called the Congestion Reduction Pilot Program at 10 of its locations in California. And at those sites, customers could no longer charge their electric vehicle past 85% state of charge. Three months later, they expanded the program to 40 sites. And now the company is announcing they're expanding it to an additional 90 sites and changing the name from the Congestion Reduction Pilot Program to the Congestion Reduction Effort. So evidently, this isn't going away. And it's what we're going to talk about here today. So let's get into it. All right, first up, I wanna explain what this program is about and why Electrify America feels it's necessary. So in an effort to reduce congestion at some of its busiest sites, they limit the customer's charge to 85% charge. So on the surface, people might look at that and say, wow, you know, that's not fair. If I wanna charge 100%, I should be able to charge to 100%. Why are they stopping me at 85%? Why did they choose 85%? Why not 90% or 75%, whatever? Why 85%? Well, there's a good reason for that. Because DC fast charging, unlike level two home charging or level one charging, when you charge on 120 volt is level one, regular household outlet, 240 volt source is level two charging. Unlike level one and level two charging, with DC fast charging, the amount of power your vehicle charges at isn't linear. With level one and level two charging, you kind of plug in and you get the same amount of power just about the whole charging session until the very end when you're at like 98 or 99%, then the vehicle starts to charge a little bit slower. With DC fast charging, you get a lot of power when your state of charge is low, but as the state of charge approaches 80%, most electric vehicles start to charge much slower. And beyond 80%, they can charge a lot slower. Once you get over 90%, most electric vehicles charge very slowly, nearly as slow as home charging on level two. In fact, with a lot of electric vehicles, you could charge the vehicle from 10% to 80% faster than you can charge it from 80% to 100%. So when you think about that, you get 70% of the battery faster than you do the final 20% of the battery. So what Electrify America is doing with this congestion reduction effort is saying, look, we have a bunch of sites that are extremely busy. The utilization is very high. In fact, people have to wait when they show up. And the reason why they're waiting is because many of the cars that are charging are charging very slowly at a high state of charge. So if we tell customers, look, you can charge pretty quickly up to 85%, but then you have to unplug and leave, what'll happen is they'll get more throughput. And evidently it's working because it started out with 10 locations, went to 40, and now it's up well over 100. So if it wasn't working, I would imagine they would have abandoned it. So evidently it's working, it's getting more throughput, it's keeping people from having to wait at the DC fast chargers before they can even plug in, which has happened to me a few times at Electrify America stations. And the last thing you wanna do when you're on a trip or just need the chargers, pull up and see, wow, they're all taken and there's three cars in front of me. I have to kind of queue up and wait for the stall to be open for me. So with this congestion reduction pilot, it's actually, in my opinion, a good thing. I, I think that in some instances, it's necessary. Would I prefer Electrify America just install more chargers at each site? Yeah, for sure. That would be the best thing is just install as many chargers as you need, but it's just not possible in many locations. So as a stopgap, at least, until there's more chargers, even from other networks, I think this makes a lot of sense. So let's take a look at what Electrify America says about this program expansion. State of Charge is powered by Cumerit. North America's premier installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. After I've helped you decide which charger to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have Qmerit install it. And if you do follow that link, Qmerit will waive the $150 installation deposit. But this is an exclusive offer for state of charge followers. So in order to get that offer, you must follow the link in the description of my videos. Okay, first up, there's a name change from Congestion Reduction Pilot Program to Congestion Reduction Effort. 
To me, that says this isn't going away. The program is expanding to over 90 additional stations across the country. This applies only to stations with fewer than 10 chargers. It does not apply to any station along highways, which is important because when you're on a very long trip on highways, you might need to charge to 100%, particularly if you have an EV that doesn't have great range. State of charge limited stations, those are the stations in this congestion reduction effort, are identified with special notice banners in the Electrify America app and on the Locate a Charger website. There's also labels that are gonna be applied to the chargers themselves. So when you pull up, if you haven't checked the app, it'll tell you, look, this station is gonna limit you to 85% state of charge. And at these sites, it is a 24 seven program. So unfortunately, even if you roll in at 3 a.m. and there's nobody at the site, you still can only charge to 85% state of charge. I wish Electrify America could figure out a way with their software to change it. And when it's overnight, maybe give a window of 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. when the sites have very low utilization and let people charge uh, fully then. But for now, at least that's the way it works. And this also applies to owners of EVs that have plans with Electrify America through their automaker, free charging, 30 minute free charging. You're not gonna get your full 30 minutes if you hit 85% state of charge before the 30 minutes is up. Your vehicles too will shut off and you've got 10 minutes to move the vehicle off the charger or you're gonna get hit with idle fees, which are 40 cents per minute. And I fully support idle fees. I think we should have them on all the networks. If your vehicle isn't charging, you gotta get off that charger because you're taking up a space and potentially causing somebody else behind you to sit there and wait to be able to charge. Electrify America did take into consideration the location of the sites. They didn't just pick all the sites that had high utilization. They made sure that there were other charging solutions in the area, even if it wasn't their network. And Electrify America did put out a statement on the expansion of the program. So let's take a look at that now. The congestion reduction effort is focused on our customer experience and enables the charging experience to fit seamlessly into a person's daily life. Charging speeds slow significantly as the EV reaches an 85% state of charge. Ending the session before speeds decline saves our customers time and allows us to power more EV trips in the same time frame. And they're correct in saying that. So I really can't fault Electrify America for expanding this program. I wish we had more chargers, but we don't. We are where we are right now. More chargers are coming. But in the meantime, I think this is a much better solution. I just feel bad for the people with EVs that have short ranges because the 15% of an EV with a 150 mile range it hurts them a lot more than it does with the guy with the 350 mile range. So I almost wish they could take that into consideration. But unfortunately, the EVs with the shorter range even tend to charge slower than the EVs with the big batteries and the long driving range. So they'd be tethered to that charger even longer if we let them charge to 100%. There's no perfect solution to this, but I do think that it's the right thing to do at this point in time because there's a lot of sites where queuing is just a daily activity. You know, you just can't pull up and get a charger. You're sitting there for half an hour before you can even plug in. I'd like to know what you guys think about this. A lot of my audience owns EVs. I know I have a lot of people that are new to EVs or that are considering buying one, but for the people that own EVs and charge publicly, what do you think about this? I'm fully behind it. I think it's the right thing for them to do right now. There's other things we can talk about with Electrify America, perhaps to say, I wish they did this, or I wish they did that better. I wish they put more stations in per location, but um, where they are right now, I think this is the best solution. So let me know in the comment stream what you think. And if you think that this is the right thing to do, um, it's coming. And I think it's going to expand across the network, uh, whether you're like that or not, I don't think they're going to stop here. I think in a few months, you're going to hear they're expanding it to 50 more sites, a few months later, even more. As long as they don't do it to the sites that are along the major highways, so far they're not doing that because in those instances, many times you need every mile to get to that next charger. And uh, at least so far, they haven't done that. I don't know how I'd feel about it if they expanded it to that. I think that might be the red line. But uh, if there's more sites and you didn't have to 
use your, all your range to get to the next one, then I might change my opinion on that. But I want to hear your opinion. So please leave those in the comment section below. And if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.